So welcome everybody to Webinar Wednesday from Sight and Sound Technology. My name is Stuart Lawler and my colleague Carl Braley is back with us as always. Um, we're delighted to be back with you for another Webinar Wednesday with the one and only Mr. Brian um, Hartson from uh, Hartson Consultancy. And we'll talk about Brian in a moment and introduce him. Uh, very much looking forward to a great presentation from Brian. Uh, just before we do that, uh, tell you a little bit about what's happening in the next few weeks. First of all, there is no webinar Wednesday next week on the 1st of July. Uh, we're taking a break next week and we're back on the 8th of July talking all things about sport and leisure um, for people with sight loss. So if you're interested in sport or you want to get a bit fitter or after lockdown, you're thinking about how you can get some more exercise, we're putting a panel of people together to talk about sport and leisure and how you can get involved and become more active. And it, think, it looks like it's gonna be a great session. That's this day, two weeks. For today, however, as always, we're using the Zoom platform. If you'd like to get in touch with us during the session, you can uh, raise your hand by pressing um, Alt and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac, or on your mobile platform of choice, activate the raise hand button. And similarly, you can chat with uh, Alt and H on Windows, Command and H on the Mac, or press the chat option on your mobile app of choice. And we will have plenty of time to stop during the session uh, for Brian to take your questions. And I know there'll be lots of questions. We've lots of people in the room today. So if you can keep your questions as concise as possible, it will help us to get through everybody. So uh, Brian um, Harchton is with us today. And of course, Brian has been synonymous with creating so many accessible solutions in the assistive technology space for so many years. I think I was just trying to remember today, Brian, the first one of your products I remember using uh, way back in the early 2000s, I think, was something called JTunes, which at the time allowed me to use iTunes for the first time with JAWS. And I remember being very excited. And I've seen so much of your work over the years and always been impressed with how you can increase proficiency, I think, and make uh, make computing easier uh, for many of us. So we're looking forward to your presentation today and you're very welcome to Webinar Wednesday. Thank you very much, uh, Stuart, for that uh, extremely warm welcome. I hope that everybody can hear me on this uh, extremely hot day here in the UK. As Stuart said, I'm Brian from Harch and Consultancy, and I'm very much looking forward to delivering the presentation to, to you today. I've got a lot to uh, tell you about and show you this afternoon. So first of all, I thought that I would give a brief overview about each of the products and the services that we have to offer. And then we'll break probably around about half past two here in the UK, 2.35, uh, to see if there are any questions. And please, as Stuart said at that time, uh, type, you can type your uh, questions into the text chat area, or you can raise your hand and we'll get to you, um, courtesy of the good offices of Carl, who is standing by. Then I'll go on to describe and demonstrate one of the products that we um, have available and it is probably our most popular project. Um, and I'd like to end by talking a little bit about the L Braille as well, because in this technology space that we're in at the moment, the L Braille is very popular and I'd like to talk about some of the work that we're doing there. We're a small company based in South Wales in the UK. My wife and I own the company, Hartch and Consultancy, and we've been in existence now for close to six years. Now, don't worry if you can't spell the word Hartchen if you're trying to Google us. I will tell you um, later on how to find us exactly. Now, put simply, we develop computer software products and services to support the JAWS for Windows screen reader or ZoomText Fusion screen reader magnifier. Now, let me make that clear from the outset. We don't support any other screen reading or magnification package. Now, while we're a small company, we're very glad to say that we have many thousands of people using our products and services worldwide. In addition to producing products, we also train people in the use of JAWS, either remotely or when lockdown is out of the way, on site at homes of individuals or within education and employment. 
We're also every week asked to carry out JAWS script writing, which means that applications are made accessible. Again, that can be for individuals, but usually it is for organizations and companies worldwide. Now, for example, I noticed that you had Bill McCann, I think, on here with uh, music technology a few weeks ago. And I did some of the scripting for one of their products, that's Dancing Dots technology. Uh, that product is called Lime, which is for music notation. You'll also find some of my work in JAWS itself, if you have a copy of it. As a company, one product for which we're very well known is a product called JSAY. That is J dash or hyphen S-A-Y. And this allows a blind person to completely control the computer using their voice. Now, you already may be using screen reading technology. I suspect most of you are. And you may be able to navigate around the computer fairly well and get the most from everything that is offers, including the use of the internet, of course. But what about people who, for whatever reason, can't do that? Maybe they have no arms or no hands. Perhaps they have a learning disability which stops them from remembering the different keystrokes which are needed. What about people who just cannot type particularly well at all? Those people should not be disadvantaged. And they are our focus for JSA technology. It's now in its 17th year and it's a popular product. Essentially, it combines the power of everything that is in JAWS for Windows or Zoom Text Fusion, which of course reads out loud what is on the screen, together with the power of a product created by Nuance, which is called Dragon Naturally Speaking, and that hears what you say. So with that combination, together with our JSA product, it gives a person the ability to completely control the computer using the human voice alone. Now, as a very basic example, you may know that in JAWS, if you want to hear the current line, you would press insert with up arrow. Now with JC, you would say to the computer, speak line, and that would cause the current line to be read. The same is true of each and every one of the hundreds of JAWS commands that there are. So if you want to hear the whole document, you say speak document. If you want to do the equivalent of pressing the control key, you would say be quiet and it would stop speaking. So what I've tried to do over the years is to provide a natural language model for each of these JAWS functions. Now, obviously you can dictate text, and when you do that, through JC, JAWS will echo back what you've said. There are also lots of other utilities built into the JC product, most of which have been suggested by blind voice recognition users themselves. Or when I've been going out face-to-face -face training people how to use JC, you know, as a product developer, one of the things that I find most useful is actually going out and working with people face to face. Because that not only shows me how they're using the product, but it also very much brings home to me some of the frustrations that people have in using whatever technology. And if I can do something about that to alleviate that frustration, then I will do. Now, it is fair to say that there is quite a financial investment in order to purchase the products that you need in order to make that work. And I'm not going to get too much into prices here, but typically that's around the £600 mark to get JC and Dragon itself. So let me talk about products that you might be able to afford today or in the near future. We have J Dictate. Now, this is a much more lower cost voice recognition product, and it's designed for people who are quite content to navigate around windows and edit text with the keyboard, but who nevertheless want a, a way of being able to dictate text into the computer. 
So people who create reports would be a good uh, focus point for J Dictate. Uh, lawyers, social workers are our customers, people who write soap operas for television, physiotherapists, anyone who feels that it would be faster to use the voice to dictate text in reports and anything that else that they need to do in order to create lengthy text passages. Now that product, J Dictate, uses JAWS or Fusion with a less expensive version of Dragon. It's very watered down, but nevertheless, it does what we want it to do. And the total cost for that kind of combination is around 200 pounds. So just to summarize where we are, there are two very distinctive different products there. They are markedly different in terms of the functionality that they offer. And that's why there is a marked difference in price. Okay, let's move on to some other things. We have our product which works with JAWS and Station Playlist Studio broadcasting software. The Station Playlist suite of products not only allows a person to broadcast audio over the internet, but they can also, if they wish, run their own radio station if that's what they want to do. This particular um, software combination, it gives a lot of functionality to make the Station Playlist suite of products very, very accessible. And indeed, we run our own radio station, which is completely dependent upon the Station Playlist products and the solution that we've created. So whether you want, for those who are, uh, are interested, whether you want to broadcast live, whether you want to do voice tracking, if you know what that is, or if you just want to host a station in what might be called automation mode, where it's just playing out music, th there's a whole variety of different station playlist products that you can purchase. And we have a page on our website devoted exclusively to that if you want to take a look. We also have JAWS scripts for the Zoom conferencing platform. Now that's the platform that we're all using today. Now Zoom, as you know, is pretty accessible anyway. Um, Zoom have always uh, done a great job in terms of providing a lot of accessibility, but as we all know, um, implementing accessibility is one thing, but it's, is it really usable? Is it efficient? Is it easy to use? And that's where a lot of the work that I do comes in. There are a number of things that the scripts that we have allow you to do. Scripts, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know, they are small programs which kind of plug into JAWS to enhance the functionality that it offers by default. Now, most importantly, you can control whether you hear about who has entered or left the room or any alerts that Zoom sends to the screen reader. That is where these particular scripts started. And a lot of the projects that I create are kind of born out of necessity. And those are the best projects for me, the most exciting ones, because um, in terms of Zoom, I didn't want to necessarily hear who was coming in to the room and who was going out of it while I was presenting. And so that's where those scripts started. And you can do lots of things with those uh, alerts, with the scripts. You can turn them off altogether. You can uh, be alerted to who's in the waiting room, whether anyone's raised a hand. It's all customizable. And I do try to put you as the user in control of everything that I do. I don't assume that I know everything. <laughs> Everyone has individual preferences. But uh, there are lots of things you can do with the Zoom scripts. You can review the chat messages when they come in. Um, you have uh, a lot of uh, control, as I say. That it does make a lot of the functionality more accessible within the application itself. And they are particularly helpful for people uh, who host conferences and meetings like this one um, because uh, they provide you with some tools to ensure that you can actually concentrate on your meeting um, while managing the presentation at the same time. Okay, so we do work particularly um, 
um, very closely with Zoom's accessibility team so that we can actually improve the accessibility of the Zoom client overall for everybody, not just for people who are using the scripts, although of course we hope that benefits you. Um, but um, one of the things that I've done quite a bit of work on in the recent past for Zoom is Zoom Phone. And this is a, a system where you can completely manage all your phone calls um, by the Zoom app itself, incoming and outgoing calls. And it makes sense, doesn't it? If you're busy working, particularly uh, working from home, you obviously, uh, you'll be hosting meetings, you'll be taking phone calls. It makes sense to do it in the one application. So that's what I've been particularly pleased about. There is one more product that we have, and it is fast becoming our most popular product by far. And I'm going to come to that in the second half of the presentation. I won't be able to demonstrate even a fraction of it, but I will give you um, a reasonable overview. It is called Leasey, L-E-A-S-E-Y. And it uh, does have the widest appeal, I think, in terms of the products that we offer. So we'll come to that later. However, one of the things that I've particularly been very conscious about over the years is people obtaining affordable, high quality training in the use of computer technology and the programs which work with the computer. I think because I'm blind as well, I completely appreciate where people are coming from, that you've spent a lot of money on the product itself and uh, such as JAWS or Zoom Text Fusion, there may not be a lot in the budget left. So with that in mind, every six weeks or so, we host an online training class so as to show you how to use a particular application. So the idea is in most cases anyway, you attend a meeting like this one, you learn about the subject matter and you've got time to ask questions. Now that ability to ask questions is in a very controlled environment. Of course, everyone gets the chance to ask whatever it is they want, or there's no point in it, but it's done in a manner that isn't too disruptive. Now, one reason for that is that we offer those courses once they are completed as audio files, as an archive, which you can buy um, at a slightly lower rate once the course has finished. So over the years, we've developed, as of this point, 21 training courses, which you can now buy on various subjects that you might like to learn more about. And best of all, at the moment, we have a special offer running uh, for the next week. Okay, and it has been running for some months now, but we're nearly at the end. It's until the 30th of June, where if you buy one of our existing training courses, you get another one free. So how do you get your hands on the training courses? Well, most people download them from our website. We send you an email containing a link to the appropriate page on the website, and people download them either to listen to them on their computer or perhaps transfer them to a portable player. Now, if you can't manage that, there may be other ways, of course, that we can get them to you. Dropbox is a very good uh, mechanism for doing that. Uh, Dropbox, of course, if you don't know, is a file sharing service. So we can try and be a little more flexible and email you direct links to the files instead. But most people download them. They're quite comfortable with that. We'll work with you anyway to try and get some kind of solution that you might need. If you do want to download uh, direct from our website, the links to the training courses do not expire. Now, some companies who offer training courses, they only give you a link which is no longer available in a, a week or perhaps a month from the time that you purchase it. That isn't fair, I don't think. Not everyone can get to do things quite as quickly as some others. And they may need a little more help, a little more time to get things organized. So we put absolutely no pressure on you whatsoever. And if you've lost the files, then you can simply download them again in a year or two if that's what you want to do. Now, when you purchase one of our archived copies of a training course, 
you get the series of audio files which are in the mp3 format it's fairly standard and a text document in most cases containing any application setup procedures and uh, a list of keystrokes. Now that is actually a computer being delivered at the moment uh, because one of the things that we do is we build computers for people if you are in the UK. So my wife has just gone to attend to that. Apologies for that uh, slight interruption. So here is the list of courses in summary. We have uh, them divided into themes. So uh, we have Microsoft related courses. Uh, we have um, two of those relating to, to Microsoft Outlook for beginners and more advanced users. Uh, advanced includes things like the calendar, scheduling meetings, uh, tasks, finding content, that sort of thing. Uh, with the basic one, it's about, of course, managing all aspects of email and contacts. There is a training course in the use of Microsoft Word. And that focuses a lot on presentation and formatting of documents because as blind people, we need to make sure that our documents uh, not only are accessible, but they look visually pleasing at the same time. So we spend a lot of time talking about accessible documents, uh, such as tables, forms, how to do those in the right way. Because I think obviously when we're in employment particularly, it's all very well for us to sit there and say, well, can you make my document accessible? How can we do that when we don't know ourselves, at least as a starting point, how to make those documents accessible? We, we must have some idea about what it means and what the expectations are in order to convey that to our employer or whoever's designing accessible documents. So um, we talk quite a bit about that about JAWS navigation quick keys for moving to different elements in a document, uh, headings, styles, how to put those in place, numbered lists and bulleted lists, uh, working with templates, uh, track changes as well uh, for collaboration on documents, um, or as they're called now, revisions. We have a, a course on Microsoft PowerPoint for creating presentations. There's one on Microsoft OneNote for creating notes to remind yourself of important tasks to do, or even to summarize the contents of meetings. We have um, some training courses, which I've uh, done over the years called Catching Up With JAWS. <laughs> and these do exactly what they, they say. They try and summarize the latest developments of JAWS uh, over the past few years. So there's a couple of those. There's one actually, which we called Over Easy, the switch from window eyes to JAWS. Uh, there was a time when a lot of people were coming over to JAWS from the screen reader window eyes, which used to be developed by GW Micro. And that was a course specifically for that. There is one called Learn JAWS Scripting from Scratch, which again takes you from the, the very um, basics, assuming you know nothing about scripting or programming JAWS at all, is not an advanced scripting course, but it is um, it's certainly enough to get you making some applications accessible. I'm not stereotyping here, but a lot of blind people love audio applications and recording and managing audio. So we have a number of training courses relating to that. So one is about iTunes to uh, ensure that you can use the iTunes program in an accessible way. There's one on SoundForge, which is an audio editor. Uh, Gold Wave, which is again quite a popular editing tool in the blindness community, if I can use that expression. There is one on Reaper, okay, which is a, a multi-track um, audio production and recording system as well. Uh, we call it Don't Let Reaper Be Grim. Okay, my wife thinks of these titles. <laughs> uh, hopefully, well, I know that she's as uh, good at language as, uh, as anyone else. So we have uh, other courses as well. We have one on Facebook. We have one about Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge. That's the new Microsoft Edge web browser. That's one of our most recent courses. We have one on a program called Everything, which is a very, very powerful file searching tool. Uh, Skype version 8, 
And also we have one called Time to Go Zoom, which is um, our most recent. We've just finished it uh, about a week or two ago. And that is available now. And that uh, talks you through a lot of the functionality using the Zoom uh, client, not just um, uh, not just from the user's perspective, but particularly about hosting meetings. And we go into other areas too, such as um, how should you um, uh, record your audio? Is the native um, audio facility for recording good enough for some people? Or are there other methods that you might use? We talk about um, the most appropriate headset microphones to use or standard microphones. Um, so all kinds of things like that. It's not just about the application. There are a lot of extraneous um, uh, parts to the training course that we cover. Now, these training courses vary in price, but usually they are in the 30 to 50 pounds range. And you get hours of tuition in each one for your money. So then let's just have a quick look at the time here. Okay, it is uh, 27 minutes past two. So I was pretty much uh, bang on, if I can say so, in terms of what I wanted to deliver in this first part of the presentation. So uh, if I can hand over to the sight and sound gu uh, guys to manage the questions, we'll spend hopefully um, about 10 minutes on those, if we possibly can. And then I'll get into the next part of the presentation, which I hope that you'll find uh, exciting. Okay, thank you very much, Brian. Uh, brilliant um, intro there. And uh, I'm certainly looking forward to lots more in a couple of minutes and uh, great offers there for the next week from Brian. And just to say that anybody who has registered for this session, everybody who is here today, you will receive an email tomorrow with Brian's contact information and um, also a link to this session if you would like to catch up with it or watch it again or share it with anybody, you're welcome to do so. Before we go over to Carl with the hands, Brian, I'm going to go through one or two questions that come in by email, if that's okay. Uh, so we got one from Bert, and he's talking about Blackboard, which is a system used in a lot of universities for uh, online learning. And he's also specifically mentioning Blackboard Collaborate. Now, that's not unlike something like Zoom uh, for using classes online. He said it's very accessible with lots of shortcut keys, but from a moderator's perspective, it could be better, for example, knowing uh, when hands are raised and knowing who, who is and what information is in the chat. Um, as Blackboard Collaborate is being used um, more so around the world, what would be the best steps to take to move accessibility efforts forward? And could you offer any uh, help in liaising in this regard. So that's from Bert. I don't know what you want to say to that, Brian. Okay. Well, the the first thing I would suggest is for you to contact the developers of it, if you possibly can, and uh, make them aware of the program's shortcomings, because it's often the case that people just need educating. They don't understand what it is. It sounds like uh, this particular application that uh, they've gone to some lengths to uh, try and implement a level of accessibility. If you're saying that they have quite a lot of shortcut keys in there, that's a good start. So it just may be that there are some areas uh, where they, they haven't really thought about it. Can I say sometimes that when uh, developers, particularly if they have no knowledge of uh, visual impairment, um, they might just be implementing accessibility by the book, okay? So they might be um, uh, implementing the shortcut keys, but they've no idea about how to test and so on. So it just may need someone like you to put them in the right direction. Now, if it really does need JAWS scripting, no matter whether we um, uh, carry out scripting on site, which as I said, is often the case, or remotely, what we ask is to undertake what's called a JAWS scripting assessment. And a lot of companies who do scripting, they, they follow the same procedure. And that means that we uh, get together with you or with someone who knows about the application in detail, and we go through it with JAWS, find out what the deficits are, we write a full report, and set out what the problems are and what we propose in terms of the number of days scripting that is required in order to put right those deficits. 
Now that scripting assessment is chargeable. We have two rates, one for individuals and one for commercial organizations. And um, once they've received the report, then it's up to them as to whether they want to take those recommendations forward. So you've got a couple of avenues there uh, that you can pursue. Okay, brilliant. Thank you for that, Brian. Another email came in from uh, David Stevenson. Uh, hi, David. And he says, good afternoon, Brian and Stuart. Which, um, which recording applications are you both using these days? Uh, are you using SoundForge, uh, Goldwave? Are you using the application spoken about on the most recent edition of FSCast? So I'll, I'll answer that very quickly and say I'm using SoundForge. Uh, Brian? I've been using SoundForge for many, many years. It could be 20 years now actually thinking about it <laughs> um, and I think probably you're not far behind Stuart anyway mm, yeah um, I have lots of uh, different applications I have studio recorder which I do like that's a product from APH the American printing house and I often use that just to record speech because I record quite a bit of speech um, so yes I, I do like that uh, gold wave I'm not as fond of it, but as I said, we do have a training course on it and a lot of people like it. The program that was mentioned on FSCast yesterday was Reaper. And that shows you that my JAWS knowledge, I hope, and what's going on in terms of Vispero is completely up to date because that was only issued last night. So I try to be on the ball. Um, they didn't mention our training course on the subject, which I thought was a little unfortunate, but it is available. And if you go to our website, which we'll tell you about later, there is a training page there. All the courses are listed and that is on there. Okay, brilliant. A quick question from Mitra, who asks, uh, he's asking in general about Zoom. He's using uh, Zoom. He's uh, currently doing a course uh, which is using Zoom. He has JAWS 2018. He's finding there's lots of messages being spoken. He hears that uh, he's, he's about to purchase JAWS 2020. He wonders, have these problems been sorted out? Are there, are there other scripts he needs to purchase? A great question. Thank you for answering it. With JAWS 2020, uh, there are some basic scripts for Zoom that were actually developed by me. Um, and they provide you with some limited functionality in terms of what Zoom offers. But the best thing for you to do, to be honest, is to uh, get our uh, what we call the Zoom professional scripts. Now, that doesn't mean to say that they only work with Zoom professional. They don't. Or with JAWS professional. It's just another way of categorizing them. Um, so the Zoom Pro scripts are what you want. The cost is £30. And they are being updated at the moment on a fairly frequent basis, about every four to six weeks um, as Zoom changes, because there are all kinds of security implications at the moment. So I would get those. And if you do, you don't actually need necessarily to update your JAWS. They will work with the version of JAWS you've got. Or if you do update it to 2020, which is the current version, they will work with that as well. And I think that if you did that, you would immediately find that Zoom is a much nicer place to be. Okay, fantastic. Uh, we do have another email, which I will come back to in a later, uh, later on from Lucy. So Lucy, if you're listening, don't worry, I have your message. But just for now, we might just go over to Carl in case there are any hands raised that anybody is desperately anxious to, to chat to Brian right now. So, Let's just have a quick look. Um, we've got a couple of questions come through in the chat box to start with. It's from Patsy and can Jay dictate the use on any ordinary Windows 10 platform? Yes, it can. Uh, what I would say to that is ideally, you really need four gigabytes of RAM or more. Uh, more is always better because obviously there's a lot going on there, as you'll appreciate, a lot of resources uh, that are needing to be uh, processed for voice in and voice out. But uh, four gig of RAM minimum is, is what's needed there. Brilliant. Um, I've just, there's one from Chris Lewis as well. He's just saying, is the new Edge browser accessible with JAWS? And I kind of know, yes, it is, as long as you're on pretty much the latest version of JAWS. Yes, um, certainly the latest version of JAWS is, is a good starting point. If you have 2019, it is 
just about acceptable. And don't forget that it's um, definitely accessible because we have a training course on the subject, which runs for about five or six hours. So you can tell that I've got quite a bit to say about it. That's brilliant. Okay. Um, are you planning on planning to develop anything for Microsoft Teams? That's for Paul Clayton. This question, Paul, comes up almost every day at the moment. <laughs> um, it, quite possibly, yes. To be fair, there are some scripts available in JAWS already. There are also some scripts that have been developed by uh, an American gentleman by the name of Doug Lee, who does uh, quite a lot of scripting work himself. So you may like to uh, Google those and uh, find out whether they are um, suitable or not. If it's uh, training courses that you're interested in, I believe that Stuart has uh, something planned there. Won't uh, rain on his parade and uh, spo uh, spoil things there, but he does have something coming up. But I would suspect this is something that we will absolutely have to do, yes. Yeah, and just to say thanks, uh, Brian. Paul, yeah, Paul, we are planning a, a Microsoft Teams webinar Wednesday event uh, at some point in July. So uh, we will announce details of that very soon. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. Um, we've got um, little, 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 little. Debbie Gillespie from Canada. Um, what time are the online courses? Obviously, I think she's looking due to cross. Oh, yeah, the, the time. The time okay, yeah. so um, when we do live sessions, uh, they are on at, uh, usually it's 7 p.m. in the UK, which is about 2 p.m. US Eastern, so you could fit it around there somewhere. But um, as I say, um, all the courses are available uh, for download now that we've done over the years, so you don't actually have to um, participate online. Even when we do have live sessions, you don't have to. We have a lot of customers in Australia, for example. They couldn't possibly do that. So um, in, in that particular case, if a time didn't suit, then you could always uh, download it later. You wouldn't be missing out at all. That's brilliant. Thank you. Um, James Bazzoni, do you recommend Chrome or Edge? Edge. With a capital E. Very interesting answer. Wow. Okay. So, yes. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with Chrome. I don't want to uh, disparage it at all. And it suited us very well over the years. Right. We're now coming to our first um, voice question. Mr. Derry Lawler, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you very much. Hi, Brian and Stuart. Great, hey, Derry. Uh, great uh, chat. A uh, couple of questions. Um, if I have Jade Dictate and I have the, uh, the, the Dragon Dictation and I wish to uh, upgrade to JSA, do I lose my voice profile settings uh, for the new Dragon? No, you don't, actually. If you've got the right version of Dragon, which is Dragon Professional yeah. Individual, so if you've got that, then then no, you don't. It just slots into uh, the um, the dragon. Right. Profile. And my, that, will Lisi and Jay dictate and Jay saying Lisi, they work on the same jars version. Lisi and Jay dictate will do. Lisi and Jay say will not. Okay. Okay. So what you would have to do that doesn't mean to say that you can't have them, as you appreciate. You know, I travel around the country and I have all these installed on a laptop. Everything that we do, so. Uh, the way that I handle that is that I install them into different JAWS versions. So just because you bought JAWS 2020, that does not mean that you can't use JAWS 2019, for example. Your license is equally valid for that. So that will be the way that I would handle it. Oh, ben, thanks. Keep up the great work. Lease is a brilliant product. Thank you so much. Thanks very much. Thanks, Terry. Great, great Derry. questions. Um, we've got Andrew Summers. Andrew, you have to, might have to unmute yourself, mate. Regular webinar Wednesday attendee, Andrew up in Glasgow. Hello, there guys. Go. There you go, Andrew. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? Not a bother. Not a bother. I've got a couple of questions, actually. One towards you, Stuart, if I can. Oh, I'm a bit nervous. Go on. Can I ask why you've moved to the YouTube for the podcast and not letting us have it on our streams? Uh, okay, uh, actually, actually, we can do both. We, we generally moved towards YouTube because the last couple of sessions had uh, some visual elements. So for example, Bill McCann was showing some devices, he was sharing his screen. 
yeah. the, the, the session, there, there were certainly two in a row. Mind you, Steve's session last week probably wasn't. Um, no. But it's a, it's a really good point, Andrew. And actually, to be quite honest, there's no reason. So let's just put them back onto the podcast as well. So yes, I will please. do that. I will it do that this very week. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. Um, hello, Brian. Um, I actually think you you do rather well. You do, and you've got around. You've actually been everywhere by the sound of it. I'm afraid so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, I purchased a product that you did the manual for, which I don't think I should mention the company on here because it will probably I'll get sight and sound jumping up and down okay. on me. What's your, what's your question, Andrew? Uh, my question is, with the actual scripts of Zoom, how do you install them if you want very, to get them? Very easily. So I'm glad you, you, you asked about this. So I've always thought that um, creating documentation that anybody mm -hmm. could understand is just mm -hmm. as important as the product itself. So what we have in terms of the Zoom scripts, when you get them, you will get access to full text instructions of not only how to use the product, but also how to install it. There is also an audio demo as well that you can listen to even before you buy them, which right. describes how to do it. And in simple terms, it's just an installer that you download you press enter on the installer a few times and it just installs the script. It pretty oh, much does like it all for you. A bit like what you do for yours. A bit like what you would do with yours. Pretty much, yes. Only a little quicker. Yes. Okay. All right, That's Andrew. Brilliant. Thanks a million. Keep up the good work. Keep it Thank going. Thank, Thank you for your question. And we will get that on the podcast. That's a good point, And I'm glad you... You raised us. Thank you very much. I did much. get asked that by others as well, and I forgot to okay. mention. Okay, no, so no, that's great, that, Carl. Andrew. Thanks. Yeah, and it's a very good point. Um, okay. Right, we now have. Oh, get off the machine, Mitra. Mitra, you might need to unmute yourself. And just while people are doing that, reminder that uh, you can ask a question. Uh, uh, by pressing Alton H in the chat or raising your hand with Alton Y. And the special offers that Brian mentioned are valid until June 30th, as are, by the way, um, our offers on um, the Vispero products, JAWS, uh, Zoom Text, and Fusion. They're all available on the website. And those offers do end next Tuesday, the 30th of June, if you want to get a really cheap, uh, low cost version of JAWS Home or upgrades on JAWS, Fusion, or Zoom Text. Uh, you have a, just under a week to do so. So we don't have Mitra. No. Um, so I'll move on. Edward Bates. You have to unmute Edward. yourself, Ed. Regular webinar, webinar Wednesday attendee, Ed Bates. Hello, Stuart, Brian and Carl. Good to see you again. How are How you? How are you all? All right? We're absolutely fine. How are you? Yes, very well indeed, Bates. Just a really quick one. Um, Brian, I've been reading a lot about your work and, and all these particular files, which I think are brilliant about how, how all these programs work. Um, can you come to sort of setting it all up you have to obviously put your own voice profiles on now how does that work with things because i'm thinking of particular like phone packages for example where people who have particularly strong accents it doesn't always work that well so like how does it work when you're setting up your voice profile does it take time is it quite an easy thing to set up it's a lot easier than it used to be. And of course, we do provide instructions from a blind person's perspective on how all this works. So the um, idea is that you will speak to the computer for about 30 seconds. Yeah. And in that 30 second uh, process, what it actually does is it, it, it examines uh, various characteristics of your voice. It also analyzes the acoustic environment. So uh, any noise that there might be going uh, on around you. A lot of people, a lot of our customers work in open plan offices. Yes. So, so uh, it analyzes that. And then once it's adapted what it's called its language model, then it has a reasonable chance of understanding about 90 to 95% of what you say. Now, obviously, we all have terminology that is special to us, whether it be street names or people's names, etc. A lot of that 
and and improving what we call your user profile is about training the system ongoing training so that it learns how you pronounce words and phrases and also what to do with those words and phrases so how to transcribe a particular word or phrase so that the next time you come to say it hopefully it will get it right that's not an arduous process i don't think these days in order to train the system but both of our voice recognition products jade say and j dictate they do have the ability to do that and of course again there are instructions as to how to do it that's very interesting thank you Philip. All right. Thanks, Ed. And thanks, Ed thanks, mate. Great, great um, question. Hang on. Let's just have a look. Uh, we have. Um, I don't know if we covered this. I might have been reading things. Alison. Oh, Alison's just said from Cornwall has Brian written any Jaws script for Teams? I think we've been through that. Yes, been through and that. actually, I think she emailed that in as well. That, that oh, was okay, just right. around the same um, time, so that's fine. And Norman Octon as well with J Dictate with little Al for new. The all for versions, we went through that as well, that's fine. Um, Jenny Axler's asked, are there any text documentation with the audio courses? Hello, Jenny. Jenny, Good you're evening. up late, my God. That's very late in Korea. <laughs> is, that, is that the uh, Polaris lady? That's, that, that, that is Lady Polaris. It Can I be, just yeah. say, Jenny, how wonderful the Polaris is? Hopefully, you would have thought my introduction, the first part of this presentation was uh, of a good standard and I was reading it on the Polaris pretty much. Um, and it just shows, it is the best product that I've ever used for presentations and delivery of them. So thank you so much to you and your team. You can, send, you can send, come send again, Brian. Brian. Yeah, I was gonna say, send Brian a few quid over from Korea, some chocolate <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, what was the question? I've forgotten the question. Well, any, te any, text? any text documentation? Oh, yes. Video courses? Um, yes, uh, there are. Um, in the main, what, what we're trying to do is to uh, give um, summaries of uh, the key points and also uh, relevant setup procedures and keystrokes. Now, the Zoom one is a little bit different. That does include a lot of text-based information as well. So uh, that one is markedly different, but um, uh, usually we suggest that you listen to the audio and the text is just for a quick reference. Okay. Brilliant. Uh, that's it. You can move, you can, um, we can move on. Those are move on. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Carl. Thank you, Carl. Um, that was wonderful. Brilliant. So Brian, back over to yourself. Thank you very much. So as I say, uh, the product which has overtaken everything else that we sell is called Leasey. Just to reiterate that, that's L-E-A-S-E-Y. And it's an extension to JAWS, and we're glad to say that now thousands of people are using it and loving it. So what is our Leasey product? Well, it serves two purposes. It is ideal for the computer beginner, someone who is just getting started with Windows, but it's also perfect for the intermediate or advanced JAWS user, as it contains lots of tools, utilities, and services to make not only life easier, but also to do what Stuart was talking about earlier on, improve your productivity as a computer user. Now, I've often heard the comment, well, I'm a very advanced JAWS user. I don't need Lisi. Some people tend to be a bit sniffy about it. Now, if that's you, or even if it's not, I hope that you will get a lot out of the product, and in particular, what I'm about to talk about. I'm briefly going to introduce you to Lisi Basic for complete computer beginners. But then for the rest of the presentation, I'll describe some of the features that Lisi Advanced offers. And I'm going to point you to places where you can find out more. I'll also demonstrate some of the features, but there are well over 60 or 70 of them. So I'm not going to be able to do very much here. There are two components of Lisi, Lisi Basic and Lisi Advance. Now our website fully describes what Lisi Basic is, and there are audio demonstrations of it. The concept is that it is for the person who is just getting started with a computer. Do you remember when you got your first Windows computer, 
perhaps some of you even don't have a Windows computer right now, and there are still plenty of those people about. Well, Lacey Basic does a number of things to ease you into the world of computing before uh, you uh, get into more advanced things. Because when you get your first Windows computer, it is a little bit of a scary place sometimes. So what Lisi Basic does is it shields people from Windows at the initial stages. So when your computer is switched on, it presents you not with the desktop, but with a menu of items containing things which people would typically wish to do with a computer. So write a document, uh, listen to the radio, work with email, surf the internet, that sort of thing. And when you enter one of these categories by pressing enter, the user is likely presented with subcategories of activities. So it is very, very menu driven. Now, if I get this right, what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to demonstrate a little bit of Lisi Basic. Let me just see whether I can uh, do this and play it to you. Just a second. I will have to uh, just do a couple of things here. Just bear with me a moment while we get the volume turned up here. Okay. Right, let's try it now. Check your email. Okay, here we go. Write a document or letter. Hopefully you can hear that clearly. So that is Lisi's main menu that I'm in at the moment. Now, as you can tell, Lisi has her own voice. It's human narrated speech rather than it being synthetic. But what we do is we try to gently guide you into the world of synthetic speech because we know we're going to have to use it at some stage. So there are times when JAWS will use its own synthesizer. And we found, as I say, that this is a, a little bit of a stepping stone, this uh, human narrated speech. But it is very responsive. So if I arrow up and down here. Check your email. Surf the internet. Scan printed material. OK, so if I go into write a document or letter. Write a document or letter. OK, and I press enter on that. What would you like to do? Create a document. We are in the menu for creating a document. So we've got various options relating to that. If I press the escape key. What would you like to do? Write a document or letter. Okay, so we're back to the main menu again. Now let's say, for example, we want to listen to the radio. I can arrow down to get there or I can just press L. Launch Lisi Audio. Listen to the radio. Okay, now if I press enter. What would you like to do? Play the most recent station you were hearing. Okay, so now we've got different categories. BBC and public radio. Classical, country, dance and electronic. So I'm just arrowing down. You'll hear that the audio is of a good standard. And now if I want to go to variety, for example, I can press the letter V. Variety. Okay, now I want to show you what happens now. If I press the enter key, List of radio stations and variety dialogue. List one, list two, 195, the globe, one of 45. You'll see that we've got the JAWS speech coming through there. Okay, so that is what I mean um, in that JAWS will uh, use its synthetic speech in time. Where we need to read things from the screen, then obviously JAWS does need to speak using its synthesizer. But for its context-sensitive help, and for its menu-driven system, what we're able to do is use Lisi's own voice instead. Okay, we have a daisy book for complete to computer beginners, which we hope is also a good way of people uh, to learn to get started. Because what I do is I walk a new user through uh, how to work with a computer for the very first time. And while the human voice factor in Lisi Basic is, I think, fairly unique, it is fair to say that the concept of presenting applications in this way, in other words, menu-driven, is not. But what similar products of this nature that are on the market do is stop right there. They limit the user.
They present only the applications which have been created and crafted using this menu-driven structure. So if a person wants to do something that's anything that falls outside of those parameters, they can't do it. He or she is well and truly stuck. And this does happen a lot. Technology is changing fast. And while that idea may have been okay once, it perhaps isn't now. There usually comes a time when a person wants to do more than those other products and applications provide. So we meet Lisi Advanced. You can very easily uh, get into Lisi Advanced by turning off the menu driven structure and that is by pressing a keystroke. And once you've turned it off, you can easily put it back on again if you want to, but uh, the setting is remembered across Windows sessions. So what is Lisi Advanced? It provides a lot of extra functionality, and I do mean a lot. So when we started this product, Lisi, which was uh, coming up to six years ago, um, people saw some of the things that Lisi could do, and they wanted the functionality as well. So Lisi Advanced has three objectives. It makes you more productive. It improves accessibility to existing applications that you might want to use. And it contains a whole raft of tools, utilities, and services that you can tap into which I think, to be honest and fair, is what most people get Lisi Advanced for. Now, with the new version of Lisi, we've substantially increased the range of tools available. I'm going to show you some of those shortly. So let me run through quickly a few of the things that Lisi Advanced can do, and then we'll get into some demos. So how then does Lisi make you more productive? Let me pick out a few things at random. We have easy ways to select text in documents, PDF files, email messages, and web pages. So the idea is that you mark the start of the point that you wish to select, you move the cursor to the end point and you mark that, and the text between the two marked points is selected. Big deal, you might say. <laughs> JAWS has that already. It does. We actually had it quite some time before JAWS did, but if I can say so, Lisi Select, as we call it, not only functions in more places, but you'll find it's a little more accurate. We have a feature called Lisi Clips, allowing you to copy multiple blocks of text and you can paste them in any order, no matter which application you are copying the text from or where it's going to. Have you ever seen tweets or Facebook posts containing emoji? These are special characters denoting an image such as ice cream or a smiley face or a pizza. Well, Lisi has a useful list of these. You just select the one that you want and it's inserted into your text edit area. We find, and the comments that we've got a lot from particularly rehabilitation workers in the United States, is that people love vertical lists. And so whether you're using Lisi Advanced or Basic, uh, we try to um, do a lot with these lists. Now, uh, particularly with Advanced, there are lots of ways of being able to get to each individual item with shortcut keys. So you can be very efficient, but if you want to navigate a menu structure, you can do that. You can bookmark passages of text in Microsoft Word and on web pages. We call them Lisi Points. Um, these are places that you want to return to later. So uh, there is in JAWS the place marker system. It's very efficient at what it does. But for example, in Microsoft Word, you can only set one place marker per document. Added to that, if you set a place marker and you type more text in a Microsoft Word document, the place marker is going to return you back to the original point. The whole point of word processing is that you're going to edit text. You're going to add to it and remove things. So the Lisi point will try and keep track of the text that you associated it with rather than the character or line position. 
One of our most popular features is uh, as a bit of a surprise to me, but it's called Leasy Cuts. And it allows you to create a shortcut to any web page, file, or folder on your, your machine. You can then uh, bring all your Leasy Cuts into a convenient list and you select the one you want. Now, why is that surprising to me? Uh, because after all, you can create Windows shortcuts to do exactly the same thing, can't you? Quite simply, because it's easy to do, that's why. Yes, Lisi wants you to be very productive, but she also wants you uh, to make it easy for you to set these things up in the first place. So I've picked out five things there, which Lisi allows you to do. There are well over 60 features, as I say, um, and I'd invite you to go to our website and have a listen to what we call our Lisi Bytes. Now, these are short audio tutorials which teach you about a specific Lisi feature. Maybe you don't like audio tutorials. Well, that's not too much of a problem. We have text transcripts of most of the Lisi Bytes there. I just want to relate a story to you before I uh, start demoing some things because I had a situation the other day where I was in Microsoft Outlook and someone had sent us some pictures and they'd sent them in an email message and it was very, very important that we access these pictures and downloaded them. And what they'd done actually was they had not sent them as uh, regular email attachments, they had pasted the pictures into the body of the email. And I thought, how am I going to get these out? Because they were not in the attachments list. You, when I went to save attachments, we couldn't do that either. But because we have a special feature in Lisi to bring all attachments into a vertical list, it actually got all of the five pictures, even though they were not part of the Outlook attachments list. So uh, that is actually a very practical example of how the Lisi, uh, the Lisi attachments feature works. And there are lots of other tools in Outlook. I hope that I'm going to be able to show you one, which I particularly like if uh, time allows. But what I thought I would do first is go into uh, one of the most um, used features in Lisi, and this is why we keep expanding it almost every month at this point, and this is called Lisi Search. Lisi Search allows you to search for um, uh, or under a variety of different um, tools and uh, website um, websites itself. I use the term websites in its loosest sense because what we actually do with this is try not to use websites at all to gather the information. What we try to do for the technically curious is that we use what is called an application program interface so that it has two advantages. First, it's faster than gathering information from the web. And second, because it's more reliable. <laughs> so with a, a lot of tools like this, um, they scrape the contents of the web page, but if the author has changed that page in some way, then it breaks the functionality, whereas an API is less likely to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Lisi Search, and I'm going to show you just some of the things, some of the sources that we have where you can search, and then I'll do, I'll do at least one. So let me just reset things back to the way they were. Okay, because we were in the menu there in the Lisi Basic. Right, I'll put the JAWS back on and I will go into Lisi Search. Lisi Search dialog, list one, list two, Google one of 29. So you can see we've got quite a few sources where you can search and retrieve information. The first one is Google. And you might think, well, what's the point of that then? Well, you can, you can press enter and you can type in a search. And what it will do is it will, that's one of the ones which does rely on the web page. Well, what it will do is it will look up the search result for you and JAWS will set focus in the virtual buffer to where the results start. But what else do we have? News, two of 29. So we have news. So you can get the headlines of, uh, we've just increased it actually to 80, 80 news sources. And you can uh, look those up. So we'll, we might try that one in a minute. RSS, three of 29. We've got RSS. So we've got a full uh, RSS reader. So you can get uh, different um, uh, news stories or anything that you like, different articles that way. 
podcast search for 29. We've just introduced this one. We call it LeaseyCast. It's a full uh, service where you can download or, or look up even podcasts. We use the iTunes, the Apple API, in order to take advantage of this. And so what it will do is it will allow you to search for podcasts um, by category, uh, or you can just type in a keyword if you want to. It will bring back a list of the search results. You can activate one of these. It, it, you'll go into it. You can read the podcast description. It will give you a list of episodes and uh, various things like that. You can even download the individual episode if you want to, or you can add it to a favorites list. Um, there's not much that you can't do with it, but uh, that's all there. Remember, too, for anyone interested, that everything in Lisi is done through JAWS scripting, absolutely everything. So that just shows you how powerful the JAWS scripting language can be. Weather, 5 of 29. We've got weather. This is one of my favorites, actually. Might show you that. Convert currency, 6 of 29. We've got a currency converter, which is very easy to use. Amazon, 7 of 29. You can search Amazon iTunes, 8 of 29. You can even search iTunes. You don't have to have iTunes on the machine. You can still search it if you want to. Last FM, 9 of 29. Uh, we've got a variety of music databases. So if you're interested in music and musical facts, then you, you can search the Last FM database for information. We've got a couple here. TV Maze. Oh, we've got one called TV Maze where you can search TV programs. So if you want to know the transmission order of programs past and present, you can do that. A lot of these were suggested by customers. Netflix. 11. Netflix. You can not only search for Netflix movies, but you can also play them as well. And we have keystrokes to move uh, forward and back through the audio, uh, to restart it, that sort of thing. Netflix audio description. Well, and that's uh, for people who just want the, to know about the audio described titles. Ultimate music database. As I say, we've got a couple of uh, chart databases here where you can look up information. Oh, eBay, 15. We've got eBay if you want to search on eBay. Wikipedia. Six. Wikipedia. Oxford Dictionaries. Oxford Dictionaries. YouTube. YouTube. That works very similar to Netflix uh, in that, um, of course, you can uh, search for things. When you found a video, Again, you can fast forward and back. You can skip the ads, that sort of thing. Just watch 19. That's another TV database. Goodreads, 20. Goodreads for reading books. RNIP Home Reading Service. 20. And now we get into a few libraries. So you can search things like the RNIB Reading Service. Um, there's also uh, the NLS for the National Library Service in the States, that sort of thing. So let me just show you one or two of these. Uh, how about the weather? Weather, five. All right. Now, um, I try to design these things so they're easy to use and to understand. So if I press enter on this, just have a listen to the language that I try to put into this. And hopefully the ease of uh, understanding of the language is universal throughout the product. Get weather report dialogue. Please type a postal code, zip code, city name or town name, then press enter for local weather type nearby. For recent searches, type recent edit. So what I tried to do is to give you a summary of the different things that you can do here. So obviously there's chapter and verse in the documentation and in our leasey bytes, but sometimes you just need a bit of a reminder, don't you? So let me type in our postcode and we'll see what happens here. So I've typed that in and press enter. Please wait. Ready. Okay. And it says ready. Now what you've got is a virtual viewer screen. And this is how a lot of our facilities work. But we don't let JAWS run away by itself. <laughs> Sometimes with JAWS, when you get into a virtual viewer type environment, it tends to read out all the information from top to bottom. I would rather you were in control of what you're listening to. So it just says ready. So now we can arrow through it. Location is carefully. Region is Midland Morgan. Country is UK. Local date and time, Wednesday, June 24th, 2023, 05pm. The temperature is 27C, which is ADF. Current weather summary, sunny. Wind speed is 11 kph. Humidity is 51%. Feels like 28C, which is 82F. Blank. 
Minimum temperature 14C, which is 57F. Maximum temperature 25C, which is 77F. Average temperature 20C, which is 68F. The forecast ahead is partly cloudy. Sunrise 4:56 a.m. Okay, so now you're going to get the sunrise and the moon uh, rise and sunset and moon set. Sunset 9:30. Let's just skip past that. All this is customizable, by the way. So you can control whether you want um, uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit only. You can tell it uh, do you want the sun and moon rise and set information, that sort of thing. Now, just below all of this, I've just set it to the defaults for you so that you could hear what it was like. Moon, 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 link next day. We've got a link that says next day. So if we press enter on that, we'll be able to get a summary of tomorrow's weather. Uh, I think it goes up to 14 days ahead, actually, this uh, service that we're using. Link forecast for today. Now, forecast for today, you might think, well, I've just heard that. You haven't heard it in detail. So when you press enter on that, what it's going to do is it's going to give you a 24 hour, hour by hour summary of the weather. So if you want to have a look and get precise information for eight o'clock tonight, you can do that. Link search for a place name. Search for a place name. So if you don't know how to spell a place name, then you can search for it here. Link configure the weather. And configure the weather. That doesn't mean to say we can configure whether it's going to be sunny or not outside. What it means is that we can configure the options. So that is weather. It's a very, very quick overview of weather, but we have got that. Let's have a look at podcasts, maybe. So let's go in here. Lisa search dialog. And I'll go to podcasts. Podcast search for. And press enter. Lisa cast dialog. List one, list two. Focus on the family marriage podcast. Four or four. Okay. So that was one that I was testing with. What we've actually got is a list of uh, four items. Now, you can arrow down the Lisi search menu until you got to podcasts and then press enter. But um, what I always try to do is to make it possible so that you can use first letter navigation on items. So again, we're coming back to efficiency of use here. So you've got the best of both worlds. So what we've actually got, uh, we've got uh, four items in this menu. Search for podcast by name or category, one to four. So you've got search, you can under uh, keywords or category. Add podcast feed to Lisi cast manually, two or four. So if you know the podcast feed, you can add it there. But underneath that, you've got your favorites. Okay, the ones that you've subscribed to, with subscribe being in, used in the loosest possible sense. Um, so they will all appear here. So if there's one that you like, you can always press enter on that to get the latest information. But let's do a quick search. Search for podcast by name or category. And press enter on it. Search for podcast dialogue. Please type the podcast name or a genre such as family and press enter edit. Okay. Now it's suggesting that we type a, um, a category. So I'll type family and see what happens. Please list of possible podcasts dialogue. List one, list two, root of evil, the true story of the Hoddle family and the Black Dahlia, one of 65. Now, did you notice how quick an API lookup is as opposed to scraping the information from web pages? It didn't even have a chance to say, please wait there, did it? <laughs> Which I put in just in case there's a problem. Let's just arrow down and see what we've got. Duncan Trussell family, focus on the family broadcast, the family secrets, four of 65. Okay, let's go for that one. I've no idea what it is, but we'll go for Family Secrets. We'll press enter. Please wait. Family Secrets, we all eat. Okay, so now what it's going to do is give you a description. Family Secrets, we all have them. And while the discovery of Family Secrets can initially be terrifying or traumatic, often these discoveries have the power to liberate, heal, and even uplift us. Join Donny Shapiro, best-selling author of the memoir Inheritance, and her guests as they explore astonishing family secrets and uncover the extraordinary lessons the truth can teach us. I'm just arrowing through that. Blank. But now we have link copy podcast feed the clipboard. So I put that in. Um, I was asked to do that by uh, one of our users um, because if you wanted to get the podcast feed for it for listening to on another device, you could link add this podcast to the Lisi cast list. So that's adding to your favorites, if you like. Blank. Heading level one listener stories, June 19th. Now we're getting into the episodes. Now, what you're getting here, in this bonus episode, we hear from listeners in the family secrets community to share. You get the title of the episode. And the way I've dealt with that is I've given it a heading indicator. So if you uh, are skimming through them and you don't like what you're hearing, you can press H again and you will get to the next heading. So that's how I've divided them up. And that is the same for our news sources as well. At a link, download or stream listener stories, June 19th. 
So there is a link below each description and it says download and it gives the title of the episode. So there is no room for doubt as to what it is that you're downloading. Land. And then you get a blank line and then you get another heading indicator. Heading level one up, 31 Galen. And that is the title of the next one. So again, a brief overview of the podcast uh, facility there, which, as I say, is actually quite new. Um, we have been asked whether we can introduce um, the facilities so you can actually browse through the categories that iTunes has to offer. And I looked at that the other day, and that is possible. So that's definitely going to come up. Now then, let's see what else we can do. Right, okay, it's quarter past three. So I'd like to uh, demonstrate two more things, if I could, and then uh, open it up for any questions. So the one thing that um, I've done quite a bit of work on is making applications accessible. So we have things like iTunes, which is a little more accessible with Lisa installed. Uh, we've also got uh, Spotify as well, which uh, provides quite a nice interface. There is a Lisi Byte audio tutorial on how to use that. One of the programs that I've done a, a lot of work on, though, is Microsoft Outlook. Um, and to be honest, it's a little bit self-indulgent because <laughs> I use it uh, pretty much all the time. So I'd like to show you one area in particular where there is a, a lot of accessibility built into it, into Lisi, and that is with the calendar. So I'll spend about five minutes on this. So I'm going to launch Outlook now, okay? And what's probably gonna happen is that we're going to get quite a few, e yes, we're gonna get quite a few emails coming in here. So we'll just silence that. So I'm gonna get it into the calendar, okay? Now, the problem I have with the way that the calendar functionality is implemented um, by default is that it presents you with not only a lot of verbose information, but also um, it's kind of in the wrong order. And you sometimes think, who actually tested this? Because it can't have been anybody that relies on it for efficiency. So what I'm going to do, just to show you, if you don't know, I'm going to switch to the JAWS default settings here. And I'm just going to arrow um, to the left and the right a little bit. I'm in the day view. Day view, two total events, zero o'clock to zero thirty Wednesday, 24 June 2020, one event, one free. And we'll just do it once more. Day view, one total event, zero o'clock to zero thirty Thursday, 25 June 2020. So if you're flicking through... If, some, if you're on the phone to somebody and uh, someone said, are you free next week? You're flicking through and what you're hearing is day view, zero o'clock to zero o'clock and then the date. Um, never mind whether you're free or not, the, the, that comes right at the end. What you're actually looking for when you left and right arrow, really what you want to skim through is, is to find the date. And that really wants to be one of the first things that you hear. So that's just one of the improvements that's in the Lisi. Uh, calendar support. I'm just going to flick back to Lisi now. So we'll, we'll go back to what, what we were listening to. And I'm going to, Wednesday, I'm going to flick through Tuesday, my days again, and we'll hear the difference. Wednesday, 24 June, 2022 items. So you're hearing the day, you're hearing how many items there are, and that's it. Thursday, 25 June, 2021 item. Friday, 26 June, 2020, items. Did you hear that little sound there? Hopefully it came across. That means that you don't have any appointments on that day. So if you hear the sound, you don't need to wait for JAWS to recite any more information. You can skim on to the next one. And this makes it very quick and easy to find what you're looking for. So if we just go back to Wednesday, because that's where we are. Third, Wednesday, 24 June, 2022 items. Okay, and we'll just tab. Quebec National Day ST, John the Baptist Day, Quebec 1 of 2. That's the first appointment. Now, what happens, depending upon where you are in Outlook by default in the calendar, if you're in the middle of the day, you might not get the appointments in the right order when you tab. And Lisi deals with that. So always, when you arrow to a day and then you tab through the appointments to see what you've got, you are going to get them in time order rather than anything that Outlook happens to feel <laughs> that you need it in. But let's just press the tab key again, and we'll listen to this next one. 
1345 to 1600 hours. Sight and sound webinar has notes two of two. So it's told us what it was. If it was an all day event, it would say all day. But what it's doing at the moment is it's giving us the time range. Okay. And it's telling us that we've got notes attached to the appointment. If you didn't have Lisi, you wouldn't know about that. What you would have to do is to go in there, open up the appointment by pressing enter, and you would uh, see whether there were notes there or not. But now you've got an immediate indication that there are notes. I'm not even sure that sighted people know whether there are notes in an appointment or not by looking at it. But you would certainly know that with Lisi. So that's just one of the things um, that is in Outlook. We have other tools in there as well, uh, such as um, Lisi Select works in Outlook. Um, that's, that's very useful. Um, and also you've got things like um, uh, you can copy an email address to the Windows clipboard of uh, an email that you've received. That's very easy to do. So that's Outlook. I wanted to just end this demonstration of Lisi before questions by talking a bit about the L Braille. I was quite gratified to hear when we were all in the L Braille presentation a few weeks ago that uh, Lisi is working on that. It was nice that they had the Alita group, they'd taken the trouble to find that out. Um, and that was certainly with the old L Braille, the old incarnation, which we had. Okay, it wasn't very responsive, but I'm told that the new L Braille is much better. But there are two difficulties, I think, with the L Braille. The first is that um, it is difficult. The learning curve is actually quite difficult um, to get your head around. They have done a very good job, and this is uh, Vispero within JAWS, uh, in order to make it possible so that you can um, actually control the computer with a Braille entry keyboard. I completely accept that. It's not an easy task. But for someone who is new to this kind of thing, it doesn't stack up to the ease of use provided by products such as the uh, Polaris, for example. Now, leading on from that, it doesn't contain some of the functions which you might have found on traditional note takers. And with some imagination and creat creativity, they could have implemented some of that. So let me deal with the first one first, and I will show you how, through Lisi, I've tried to deal with some of that. So the L Braille gives you a lot of flexibility in order that you can use your favorite Windows applications while on the go. And with the unit's long battery life, obviously that's very uh, a good proposition, isn't it? But imagine using only eight keys to perform all these Windows functions that you take for granted. It's a bit of a tall order. The concept is that you press various keyboard combinations to effect Windows keystrokes. So if you wanted to execute Alt F4 to close a program down, what you would do is you would hold down dot eight with space, which says to the L Braille, okay, I want to use a Windows keystroke now. And you also press dot six, which represents Alt, and dot one, which means a function key is uh, going to be pressed right now. And once you've done that, assuming you can remember it, you release the keys and you press the letter D, which represents four. I hope I've got that right anyway. <laughs> now, Lisi makes this much easier. Yes, you could attach a QWERTY keyboard to the L Braille, and there's nothing wrong in doing that. I don't think it's cheating, particularly uh, when you're getting used to it. Um, but uh, certainly we have a little easier way. What you do is you press the, um, a, a key on the keyboard, which is easy to locate, it's the shift key with B. Now the shift key on the focus, which I've got one in front of me, and that's the device you would use for the L Braille, it's actually uh, on the front of it and it can be easily found. So shift with B. And when you do that, you are presented with a prompt. And what you can do there is to type the, uh, exactly what you would like to happen. So 
I'm going to, uh, let's just see where we are here. Title is Calendar. Okay, so I'm just going to go to the desktop folder because I think that'll be easier. And I'm going to press uh, Shift 1 with B. El Braille Keystroke Dialog, Keystroke Edit. And what I'm going to do, I could type Windows space R if I wanted that to happen. But we do have various abbreviations here to shortcut this a little bit uh, for some of the traditional Windows kind of commands. So if I type, uh, I think it's W space and then R and then press enter. Outlook, open, edit combo, Outlook, one of 26, alt plus O. Okay, now what it's done there is it's taken me into the run dialog. So if you wanted to, you could just press that keystroke, type W space R, and there you are, you've got the run dialog. If you wanted uh, Windows tab, you would type W space tab. Okay, um, let's go to, um, oh, I should tell you that you've got other keystrokes that you can use, uh, like uh, C for control and A for alt, that sort of thing. But as I say, if you want to spell them out, there's no difficulties if you can't remember them. So let's just go to a website here, shall we? Um, I'll type um, our website and I'll press enter on the focus. Untitled home visited link. Okay, here we are on the website. Arjun Consultancy link, home. Welcome to Arjun Consultancy, Arjun Consultancy. Right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm you again using the focus, I am going to uh, press the uh, shift one with B again. El Braille keystroke dialog, keystroke edit. And this time I'm going to type I space, which is for insert, and I'm going to uh, type F7 and press enter. Links list dialog, links list view, skip the main content, one of 58. And here we are in the list of links. Now you can do that with pretty much anything. You can type insert uh, I space down arrow or, or whatever you want to do there. So we have uh, insert keys uh, represented by I. And if you wanted to carry out a leasy function, you can type L. I think it's just L actually, or LE, um, and followed by a leasy keystroke. But because the leasy keystrokes are so convenient anyway, you shouldn't need to do that. Now, the other thing um, in terms of the note taking facilities, what a lot of people want to do is to have convenient keys in order to be able to do things that they would have done on a previous note taker like the Braille and Speak or the Braille Light or even uh, the Polaris even. Um, and you can do that with Lisi. We have convenient keystrokes. You can do things like if you wanted to find text in a Microsoft Word document, for example, what you would have had to do on the L Braille, you would have had to have gone through this convoluted method of pressing Control F um, in uh, on the uh, Braille entry keyboard for find. You would type in what you want to search for, you'd have to press enter, and then you'd have to press escape. And then if you wanted to hear what the current line was rather than read it, you'd have to do a bit of arrowing around. So Lisi makes it easy. So you can press a key on the keyboard, which is easy to remember. You type in what you want to search for, you press enter, and it reads the current line to you when it's found it. There is also a find next for finding the next occurrence. There are keystrokes for deleting the current word, which make it easy on the L Braille for selecting text and all those sorts of things. So I'm sure we'll do more of these in time, but essentially um, that is a good start, I think, on improving the functionality of the L Braille. It just takes a little bit of thinking but it can be done um, when you think creatively about how you're going to implement something like that and to make it easier. Okay, so we are coming up to 3.30. Um, I will stop talking for now. Thank you for bearing with me, but I do think, I hope it's an exciting product um, that you might want to learn more about. Lisi at the moment is on special offer. Uh, Lisi Advanced is £35 at the moment, and that again runs to the 30th of June, as does uh, everything else. Uh, thank you, Stuart and Carl, and um, I'd be happy to stick around for a while and answer any questions. Okay, Brian, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. Absolutely great presentation where I guess, well, we always knew it would be great, but it was absolutely fantastic. And I think um, L Braille and, and your comments on L Braille are really interesting. And of course, if anyone is interested, L Braille is also on special offer. Uh, there are um, 
there are price uh, price reductions on both the, the, the L Braille dock and the Focus uh, 40 Braille display. That's for the new fifth edition until, again, June 30th. Everything gets cut off on June 30th in all sorts of companies. So uh, let's go back over to the q and I'm sure there's lots of people who want to ask questions. So Brian, we do appreciate you staying around for a little while. So over to Carl. Um, we've got Michael Cassidy. Michael, it's all yours. You need to unmute yourself. Michael, how are you doing? We'll get you just unmute there. I am now unmuted. How are you? You are indeed. That's what happens when you have to seek on the phone to find your unmute button with this um, recent implementation in Zoom. They always ask you to unmute now. Yes, yes. <laughs> As I'm sure Brian's well aware. My question is, if you have Lisi, do you then need to buy um, script as well, say the Zoom script, just as an example? Yes, you do. Um, they That's are fine. completely separate products. Yep, no, that's, that's fine. All very good. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Michael. Brilliant question. Thank you, Michael. Um, we let me just get rid of that hand, otherwise it will confuse me. Um, Nicola Dixon, you should be able to unmute yourself, Nicola. Hi, can you hear me? Hi, Nicola. I think you sent us an email, didn't you? I did. It's all right, but I I realised I'd actually sent it to the general address rather than to yours. No, it, it did come. I just <laughs> hadn't got to it yet. I was going through them with Brian, but I didn't get to yours yet. Apologies, but you can oh, ask no, your no. question now anyway. Um, well, hi, Brian. It's it's lovely to hear your voice again. Um, um, I am actually quite interested in this, uh, the, the Lisi thing. Certainly, I will have a, a, a closer look at it because it, it does sound um, very efficient, I mean, the number of times I've gone to look for something and I've had to search for something else and then the, as you say Jaws then reads the whole thing out to you and you think Argh! so yes <laughs> I, I think that's going to be very good um, my question sorry it's slightly off topic from from Lucy that's okay um, I, I, I I'm now thinking I, I, I actually um, have a son who is will be going up to secondary school fairly soon and my i haven't a sort of a, a, a vague idea for a business um because i've been helping other children with their um foreign languages with their, the french particularly because that that was my speciality uh and a lot of the problems they have is with the pronunciation and so what i'm thinking is, is setting up a kind of business where i i record people's oral presentations because that's where they get stuck um, on how to actually pronounce it uh, and then send it back to them and I'm, I'm looking for a sort of a foolproof method of being able to do this because obviously you're, you're reading what they've sent you um, whether, it's in, whether I print it out as a hard copy or read it on a braille display uh, and I'm, I'm sort of worried about the, the, the noise of the actual braille reading and I'm wondering if there's anything I, I can do about it. I haven't really had a chance to do much experimenting with lockdown, but it, it, I thought so, I'd so ask that's the expert. So that is the key issue, is it? It's, it's to prevent the noise of the braille scrolling? Uh, yes, whether it's either the hands on the paper, you know, yes. physical paper, or whether it's the noise of going through with the braille display, you know, pressing the next, you know, panning to the next thing. And I'm just wondering if there's anything I can do about it. Okay, well, there's a couple of uh, comments. Great question, that is. Um, so the first is, there are, depending upon your budget and how sophisticated you want to be, there are all kinds of microphones that you could use that are noise cancelling. Right. Uh, okay. okay. And what I would suggest, if you just drop me a quick note, um, you'll get the contact details, I believe, um, in the next day or so. Um, then I will um, provide you with some uh, suitable recommendations as to uh, the kind of microphones that you might use. But I have to say again, if the funding allows, the Polaris is by far the quietest note taker um, for scrolling. I can't hear it, actually. Um, mm. So when you scroll through, you just cannot hear. And that's why I love it so much, because I do so much in the way of uh, presentations and things like that, right. that yes. no one knows that I'm using Braille. At yeah, all. that's so, interesting, because I, I actually did a dummy run for my niece, obviously, because she's family. And that was the one thing that I noticed. I could I could always hear either the down arrow on the 
the, the keyboard or the you know whatever which, whichever way I chose I couldn't get rid of the noise now obviously I was only using uh, I was actually only using my phone um, okay but so, I do have... so thanks for your question uh, and it's, it's great that you're making these uh, uh, private observations because and, and trying to prevent it before you even get started that's a that's a great way forward I think but drop drop me a note and uh, I'll see what I can suggest Super. Thank you very much for your help. Thanks, Nikki. And yeah, we will send out all Brian's contact details in a, in a follow-up email that will go to everybody who registered for this session at some point tomorrow. Uh, so that, 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 will, that will be sent out. Uh, we any, anybody else with questions, Carl? Uh, perhaps while we're waiting, I'll just go to an email, Brian, that we received from Lucy Edwards. And she says, um, can you talk me through the best software for radio? I'm completely blind and I have a home studio set up that I'm configuring. What experience have you had with this over the years? That's a really interesting question for you, Brian, I think. <laughs> it is an interesting question. I guess it depends on exactly what you want. Um, if it's audio production that you're wanting to do, uh, Reaper is, is a really uh, good starting point, I think. Have a look at our uh, Don't Let Reaper Be Grim training course, as I say. Um, the interest interesting thing about Reaper is, and we do quite a lot of this, um, is that it's also useful for editing video as well as audio, okay, and to lay audio tracks on top of video as well. You can be very, very sophisticated with that if you uh, care to take the time to learn how to use it. And uh, we do a lot of this. Uh, my wife has a very active uh, YouTube channel and Vimeo and Facebook, all that sort of thing, for which videos are required. And so Reaper is a very good way of doing that. If you don't want to use Reaper, and I can't see why you wouldn't because it's very cost effective, uh, you might want to try something like uh, SoundForge, which is still very accessible. Um, but hopefully that gives you some starting points. Brilliant. And uh, Lucy, thank you for sending the email. Uh, okay, let's just see. Carl, do we have anybody else who uh, has a question? Just want to check. I, I think, think uh, uh, Carl's either disappeared somewhere or we, we <sighs> might just have a quick check and see. Uh, just one sec. Yeah, Carl is here. Uh, Carl's muted. Just I like may have muted oh, myself. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> Tina. I can, I can see Tina there. Yeah. Tina, okay, brilliant. Tina, you are unmuted. Sorry, I'm having a mare. Yeah, I'm muted, mate. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> hi, Tina. Can you hear me? We can hear you indeed. How are you? Um, yeah, good afternoon. My question is, with the um, leases, because I've got a screen reading system already that um, is, is quite similar to that, but obviously leases is going to be more up to date. And when I get emails, it doesn't like um, the links or anything. It won't let me um, get the link to anything. And I have got JAWS, I've got the latest version. And I was wondering if it would be easier for me to do it, because I've never done emails through JAWS or anything. I've only done a little bit of um, a little bit of Word, and that was ages ago. And I've just started to touch on Excel. But other than that, I haven't really done anything online with JAWS, because all you get is link, 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 and it drives me absolutely nuts. Uh, this, I'm glad you've raised it, Tina, because this is exactly what I was saying about 30 minutes ago. Yeah. If you've got anything which is in the least bit out of the ordinary with some of these other systems, it is not going to like it. And a lot of email these days, uh, even the sight and sound ones, although they're, of course, they're extremely accessible, there are a lot of links in there and a lot of um, additional graphics and visual imagery that you get. And some of these other systems cannot deal with something like that, whereas JAWS is perfectly equipped to deal with it. And of course, through Lisi, you're going to be uh, having no problems either in accessing any of that information. So I would, I would uh, s think seriously about it. Yeah, because the last time I did actual any serious stuff on JAWS was when I was learning that, and that's... Um, in that was um jaws 2000 or so in 2000 or whatever, around about well, that's a long time ago yeah good good while ago I just sort of get 
get more training on it and everything. So maybe someone could help me out with a virtual thing or email or something. I don't know. I'm going to need a lot of help. So okay. I'm going to probably go and just to George and Lisa's because, as you say, you can get Zoom. Because I'm having to rely, I had to rely on my husband to actually get me on this afternoon because he's he's actually got me on his Apple Mac. Okay. <laughs> so it's it's so difficult because having. Well. Oh, well, have a, have a look at um, our website or ask your husband to have a look at it and, uh, and see, what, see what you think. All right, Tina, thanks very much for your question, okay? Thank brilliant, you. It's brilliant to talk to you. Thank you. Cheers, Tina. Okay. Um, next, hang on two seconds, we have Divaki. Divaki, I think we had Divaki last week. Well, I think regular, we did indeed. You should be attendee. able to unmute yourself. Oh, I've just muted Hello. you. Hi, Hi Divaki, how are you? Yeah, actually, I've... Um, ordered my Zoom Fusion uh, last Friday, and I'm yet to receive it uh, from Sight & Sound. Obviously, they informed me that it has to be fused or whatever has to be done at Freedom Scientific in US and COM. Um, in the meantime, uh, if I have um, Elise with that, because I used to have a bit of a sight, that's why I like Zoom. Um, I still have some. But Lizzie, will it work with Zoom Fusion? Because the first part of the thing I have missed out. You know, I, I received a delivery, so I'm sorry I couldn't really receive That's to that. That's okay. We we did as well. <laughs> um, okay. Yes, definitely. Uh, it will work with Zoom Text Fusion. Okay. So uh, so it makes the working through um, is very easy. And uh, if I order it now and then when the Zoom Fusion arrives, uh, will I be able to install it on top of it? Because I, I would wait, wait to order it because yeah. when, you, when you order it, the, the yeah. one thing that we do ask for is your Fusion serial number. Yeah, I need to and wait you, for it. Yeah, and you yeah. won't have that until it's provided to you. So um, just sit there and wait for a little while. As soon as you've got that, please come back to us again. Okay, and, a friend, and, yep, yeah, uh, sorry, and a friend of mine uh, also has ordered the same thing, and he is a Polaris user. I mean, he bought it recently. Um, so if he has one lazy, it can be um, used for both, is it? For the for the computer as well as for the Polaris, is it? No, no, it's nothing to do with the Polaris, I'm afraid. Oh, uh, right, okay. It, it works just it. on a Windows PC with JAWS or Fusion installed. Okay, okay, I got it now, yeah. Because you were talking something about the L Braille, and, because I'm not a Brailler. I, I, I gone blind only about seven years ago, so, you know, okay. I, I I'd, no I'd forget all about that. that. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay. Th thank you for your question. Thanks a million. Thank Okay. Um, I'm going to quickly run on to David Stevenson. Hi, David, David. You should be able to unmute yourself. David was the gentleman who emailed us in about audio yeah. editors, I think, earlier can on. Can you hear me now or not? We can. How are you, David? Um, well, thanks very much. Good, good afternoon to everyone. Thanks for uh, answering my questions on, on recording. Um, and I've got a quick question, two quick questions. Uh, one rather interesting one. Um, with regard to, uh, I've got a little bit of coordination problem from time to time. So if there are keystrokes that have, say, three keystrokes, I, I some you know pressing two coordination, I sometimes have problem with that. Presumably, that could be altered within JAWS, or scripts can be could be changed. Well, in terms of our Lisi product, if you were going to have that, most of the keystrokes that I can think of actually um, don't require you to have three hands in order to, uh, <laughs> to use them. So you should be in good shape there. However, if, uh, and this, this happens a lot with people, they even can't uh, go to those lengths. So we do have a lot of menus. We do in particular have a hotkey help menu, which is divided into categories. So if there's a particular function that you're looking for, you can just arrow down to the one that you want, press enter, and the keystroke will be carried out. And actually, just going back to the L Braille for a moment, for those who do have the L Braille, that's how they often do it, actually. They find the one that they want through the hotkey help. So in actual fact, uh, you could do the same 
uh, with your copy of Jaws and Lisi if you had it, um, if you didn't want to press the keystrokes. But I think you'd be pleasantly surprised at how easy a lot of the keystrokes are. Now, my other question is, and I thought about this through, through your presentation, one of my hobbies is campanology, which people will know is a study of bell ringing. Now, there are um, computer programs that are available to allow you to do bell ringing on the computer. Now, how would I go about getting um, your scripts for that? Would I be advised to, to go to more than one company and get quotes? No, you say, no, just come to me, come to me. No, <laughs> but, but, but seriously, would I go to the manufacturers first and get and then get them to, to, to get in touch with you, with you and, and, and another provide you know another okay. script writer or this is very similar to the the question that i uh, tackled earlier about the um uh, about the university application so first of all i would um uh, download the program and find out whether you can use it or not or whether there are any shortcut keys you might like to write to the developers to ask whether they have uh, um, uh, implemented or whether they have plans to implement any anything special to make the accessibility easier. Now, if you really do need scripts, yes, of course, um, please go to as many companies as you like um, in order to, to get quotes. That would be a sensible thing to do. And indeed, if you were in a work situation, that is what would be required. I, I appreciate that, yeah. If you're an individual, I think you'd find that we were the less expensive anyway. Um, and uh, you, could, you could certainly write to us and ask uh, if it could be done. There, there is obviously uh, quite a quite a waiting list of, uh, and, and it could take some time to to set something up to get it working. But uh, I would I would suggest letting us know what the program is, and uh, we'll see what advice we can give you and uh, what what it would be likely to cost. And presumably, it would cost more because it was a specific pr uh, program, and it wouldn't perhaps be used again. I'm afraid that is the case. Uh, for example, I, I did uh, probably about 15 years ago, I scripted an application for just such a situation, someone who wanted to do bell ringing. Now, unfortunately, we couldn't, even if it still worked, which probably wouldn't, uh, we couldn't distribute those scripts to you. Um, so yes, unfortunately, it does work out quite expensive because it will be an individual request and we couldn't sell it on. We couldn't do anything with it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, lovely. Thanks very much. Uh, many thanks for your question, David. And I learned something today. I didn't know what camp campanelling was. So thank you. All right, we're just going to quickly move on. I've got a couple of questions in the chat box as well, and there are still some hands raised. Um, I don't know if you got this one from Leah. Can you use Lisi with JSA? So? Oh, no. yeah, we did that, yeah. We yeah, that. okay. Yeah, yeah. Are there any deals on Lisi Advanced at the moment? Yes. Can I put an Advanced on my Jaws dongle? Many thanks. That's from Dan. Yes and yes. So until uh, next Tuesday, the 30th of June, it's Lisi Advanced is £35. If you have um, Jaws as a, um, a dongle authorization, which I think is what you're, you're asking, then yes, it will work with that. Brilliant. Thank you for that one. Um, Norman said, very interesting presentation. I must leave now. Sorry. Um, Debbie Gillespie, does Lisi work on multiple PCs? Yes, provided you have the same JAW serial number on each of the PCs. Excellent. Lovely, speedy responses. We like this one. Um, Georgina Joyce, would Lisi help with Windows Mail or do we have to have Outlook? You don't have to have Outlook. I wouldn't recommend personally Windows Mail to anybody, whether they had um, Lisi or not. It's not particularly intuitive. We do have support for Thunderbird, Mozilla Thunderbird, if you wanted to use that. For example, Lisi Select that I talked about earlier, that's working in Thunderbird. Ideally, Outlook, but if not, um, Thunderbird to be a close second. Brilliant, thank you. Elspeth Pierce, just need to unmute yourself if you have a question, please. All right, Els Elsa. Oh. And we're gonna, we, we'll be wrapping this up in about 10 minutes, just to let everybody know. So uh, if you can keep your questions really quick, uh, because we're also conscious right, of just, Brian's time. Just gonna quickly move on to um, Chris Brady then. Chris, if you can Chris. unmute yourself. 
regular regular webinar Wednesday attendee. You might just there you go. To. Oh, yours, well, Chris. Um, How are you, Chris? Very well, thanks, uh, Stuart, and thanks very much for your emails uh, to get me back onto the web circuit. Thanks very no much. No problem. Now, um, I used to be, I used to do a lot of transcript typing uh, at one time, and I used to manually type the uh, the transcripts in. There were transcripts of tapes. Uh, now, have you got, um, Brian, a, a, a piece of uh, equipment that I could actually use and I could repeat what the person was saying on the tape or the, 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 the transcript and actually dictate it into a computer? Uh, J-Dictate would do that for you. You could actually have the, uh, the tape being played in your ears and you could uh, speak it back into the microphone and uh, that would transcribe it. Uh, you'll also find that uh, if you have the appropriate version of Dragon, you are able to uh, convert some audio files uh, using Dragon itself. It w really would depend upon the quality of the spoken output. Um, but if you wanted to dictate into a portable recorder, for example, uh, you could certainly do that and then uh, dump the file onto the computer and it would transcribe it as text. So there's a few routes you could go down there. Right. I think I would probably go down the route. Um, I, I would probably go down the route of um, having the, 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 the speaker in my ear. Yes, I think that's a more accurate way. And, and then, so... What would I? What would I need? Uh... You would need uh, Dragon Naturally Speaking Home, which is uh, only for dictation. So you can't do any command and control with it, but you can dictate text with it. And you would need our G Dictate product, which again is on special offer until the thirtieth of June. Um, and there's a, I think, twenty pounds off that one. Ooh. Now there, there may there, there may there may be um, uh, instances where I would need to. Um, go back into the text and actually uh, correct any if if the yeah if i you would. my dictation was uh, not um put in the computer correctly yeah so uh, you, you can certainly do that because with j dictate remember we're not using the human voice to control the computer that's a more expensive product so what's going to happen is you're going to dictate the text and you're going to do it in the specific style that we recommend um, phrase by phrase and JAWS will repeat that back to you and then uh, when the um, when the text is dictated you're going to use the keyboard to edit it just as you would edit any other document that's right well, yeah there is um, a webinar which is coming up next week if you follow sight and sound social media I am uh, doing a full webinar about uh, voice recognition so you might want to come along to that yeah that's on tomorrow week thursday morning the te uh, 2nd of july at 10 o'clock with it's the it, we're doing it in association with seascape charity up in fife in scotland um uh, chris if you want to email me i will make sure that you get registered for it we're, i'm not actually running it myself but I, i'll pass it on to my colleague who is and we'll get you sorted out okay uh we're just going to move on because i know there's a few other questions so thanks okay. very much chris for your questions i um just had very interesting webinar many thanks we'll have to leave unfortunately stay safe everyone that's from dave wilson thank you dave oh, fantastic dave. um thank we're just you. going to go on to patsy patsy lindo you regular regular yourself. attendee yes can you hear how, me how are you oh, patsy? Yours, yeah we can hear you patsy yeah good afternoon everyone and good afternoon brian this is just an odd side question as I've been listening because my sister who lives in the Caribbean has a Jaws, at least four years ago she did. And as I'm listening to Lisi, which I think would be very helpful to her, the question is, do you support this on overseas um, equipment? Are there licensing issues? Most of our customers are overseas, Patsy, to be oh. honest with you. Okay. Uh, okay. So we have customers uh, in um, uh, America, Hawaii, Canada, particularly Australia as well. Um, so, yes, we have no problem supporting those people. Okay. All right. I'll, I will then speak to you when I get your details about this for, 
for her, but also for me, because there are things I would like to speak to you about for okay. Lisi, for myself. All right. All right, Patsy, and I'll be sending out Brian's contact details tomorrow by email. Lovely. Thank you so much. You're Stuart. more Thank than you, welcome. Patsy. Good to speak to you as always. Um, right, last and lucky one. Oh, there's just another one just come in. Right, we'll just squeeze these the last two questions, guys, so we can get it wrapped before four. Yeah, two to um, go. Leah Campbell. Leah. Could be okay. able to unmute yourself, Leah. Just unmute yourself. Now, Leah is using voice recognition software, so it may take ah. her a second or two. She's on there now. It's all yours, Leah. Hi, Brian. I apologize. I missed the response. Would Lisi Advance work with JSA? I'm afraid it doesn't, no. Oh. Um, but actually, you have a lot of the functionality in JSA already that Lisi has to offer. Uh, not all of it, I accept, but you've got quite a lot of it, and there will be more coming um, as the time goes on. Obviously, it takes quite a while to adapt it to a voice recognition platform. That's why it takes uh, a, a little longer than, and why the lease users get things first. But usually, these things do creep in to uh, JSA over time. If you really wanted to use both, you could, there's no problem, you could install JAWS 2019 and have your lease in there and have JAWS 2020 for JC or vice versa. Um, but that's the best we can offer right now. All right, fantastic. Th thanks for that and thanks for the question, uh, Leah. Um, right, and that's I, it. One and more. the last one is a random number, so I'm not really sure what's going to happen here, but I'm oh, ready for the mute button. Random phone number, okay. Yes. Hello. Hello, Hello how yeah. are you? Hello from Sweden. Ooh. Hello from Sweden. How are you? We have what's, what's the Swedish jury's vote in the Eurovision? <laughs> yeah, yeah. UK. <laughs> I want uh, uh, Ryan, two questions. Uh, the first question is about Lisi, and inside one, the French uh, computer. If you have heard about it, uh, did you try that combination because they have Jaws as well? Are you saying uh, uh, in the French language? Is that was that was no, that? What no, it's a, it's a French. There is a piece. It's a French tablet. Uh, it's a um, um, the, with the Perkins keyboard uh, embedded in the glass. And uh, oh, I've I heard wonder. About, yes, I've heard about it. And actually, there was a webinar on that uh, earlier on in the week. And I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm very, very interested in that indeed. I'm, I'm waiting for that webinar to become available so that I can learn more about it. So I don't have an answer for you right now, but I'm okay. extremely keen to, to know more. I wanted to know if we could, um, uh, if it uh, may, uh, can make uh, the use of that uh, PC uh, easier. I don't know at this point. Okay. The second question, and the last one, uh, can one voice dictate in Arabic with, uh, to Lisi? I'm afraid not. Um, this is a question that comes up right, um, it, it does come up quite a bit. Um, unfortunately, we don't have many language options at the moment. We do have German. We have just finished that, uh, but we don't have anything further. Okay. I am thinking of purchasing the advanced one because I have JAWS and we will see. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Thanks a million. Uh, okay, that's just think, about it. Hang on, oh, hang on oh, two no. seconds. I'm just going to... Um, okay. Elspeth has unmuted herself, so I'm just hoping... <laughs> I have indeed. Oh, there she is. There she yeah, is. Yeah, I am. Yes. How are it's you? taken me a while to catch on, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm very interested in this uh, Lisi product, uh, Brian. Um, it, it, I've, I'm, I'm starting to use El Braille. Um, and some ways I'm having a bit of a mare with it because I want to get rid of a lot of the clutter and just have the email, just the programs on it I want. Um, now, regarding Outlook... Do you have to have, can you use Office 365 or yes. do you have to have, you can? Yes. Brilliant. Okay, because that's basically what I'm trying to install at the moment. In fact, that would be my recommendation. Right, yeah. okay. Because I've got the 365 suite, so I'd be able to use that with Word and everything else if I, if I were to yes. go down that route. Excellent, Brian. You've made my day. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Thanks for your question, Elspeth. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you Bye-bye. Right, guys. Um...
I think that is all the questions. Okay, thank you, Carl, uh, for that, as always. And thank you, Brian, for a really engaging uh, two hours. Great presentation, superb answers, as always. And thanks to everybody for joining us. This is the end of today's session. We're back in two weeks' time. Remember, next week there's no webinar Wednesday, but emails will be circulating shortly with all the contact details for Brian's company. And in two weeks' time, we're back to talk all things health, fitness, and leisure related. So it's uh, going to be a great show, and we're looking forward to that. And uh, for, for the moment, thanks. We will be yeah. converting all of the previous webinars into podcasts. That is absolutely correct. Thank you, Carl. The podcast will be uh, going up in the next day or so. Uh, we'll start with Brian's and we'll work back, but we will get the ones that were missed that went on to, to the um, YouTube channel uh, converted to podcasts as well over the next couple of days. It's a little work in progress, but bear with us because I can't ask Carl to do it. I'd just, I would, like to, I uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd just like to thank you for the uh, the opportunity today and I hope that uh, anyone who is still about uh, found my presentation uh, interesting and look forward to hearing from some of you. All right. Thanks, Brian. And thanks, everybody. Stay safe and we'll talk to you in two weeks. Cheers, Brian. Bye -bye. Thank you. Well done, again, Stuart, as, as usual. Thanks, Carl.